Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Cerner Hacks. In this episode, we're going to talk about how I round during my day, starting at the beginning of the week when I'm taking over a bunch of patients, and hopefully you'll pick up a few tips to make your day more efficient. Okay, it's Monday morning, and we're going to be adding a few patients to our list. Coming on for first thing, we don't have anybody in my list here, and so if we can go into my custom list here, nobody's actually on that list. So we want to add a few patients. Let's say we're going to take over four patients from internal medicine. We're going to go and pick up these four here. So we're going to right click on these four patients, add to my custom list. So now when we click on this and refresh, those patients are now showing up on our list. So we've talked about the custom list in another episode and how we create that. This is the list I normally go with because it is the most definitive list where patients won't get lost. These patients are going to be added physically by me and in order for that patient to fall off the list, it will have to be deleted by myself. This is in contrast to the Cerner generated list which Cerner development team may make for you and this is the Cerner list, it may be called something else. When a patient is assigned to you as admitting, attending, or covering physician, these patients will automatically populate your list. However, when a patient is discharged, if they change to a different consulting provider, if they change to a different service, or if they go to the OR, then they may fall off your list. So I don't use this list just due to the inaccuracies that can happen. So let's go back to my custom list here. And the next thing I normally do is just print off the list of the patients that I've now selected. So I'm only seeing four patients today. So what we'll do is we'll print off that list. So you'll just have to select a printer. Oftentimes we'll just default to the local printer and we'll press OK. So what you'll have is a physical list. It should be a fairly abbreviated list where you can make some notes. The next thing we need to do is triage your day. Let's see who is sick. Right now, I, of these four patients, I don't know who is the sickest patient, so we want to make sure that we round on those people first. So what I generally do is start going into the charts one by one, and when you go into a chart, it'll ask you to sign a relationship for yourself, either consulting provider and covering provider are the ones that you generally want to choose. By choosing one of these, they will fall into your Cerner generated list. It will also fall into the group list that you belong to, let's say if you are a hospitalist, um, it will automatically populate that hospitalist list as well. So you don't have to do anything. And that way their colleagues will know those patients have been added to the general census for that group. Okay, so let's choose consulting provider. So here the first thing I do when I enter the chart is want to change that patient to my service and me as attending. So we'll go into quick orders. And what we want to do here is admit the patient to hospital medicine. So this is a little contrary in terms of what you might think you need to do because the patient is actually already admitted. Uh, but what this doesn't readmit the patient. What it does is it changes the MRP status as well as the service status as well. So when you uh, admit to inpatient uh, to hospital medicine, it'll change both hospital medicine and your MRP all in one go. Um, you could also go into the patient, patient disposition here and change the attending and change medical service. This is less reliable. I find that when you change the attending, it does it right away. When you change the medical service, um, I think it has to go through the unit clerk who may or may not understand to change the medical service. So the most reliable way of uh, changing MRP and service is to admit the patient. The encounter type will remain the same. So we're going to sign off on this. And because we're in a Cerner environment, it actually won't let me do this in the Cerner environment. It'll be a missed warning. And we're just dismiss that. And what generally will happen is this would change to me as attending and also change the medical service to the newest service. And to double check that, we would go back into our patient list. So under the real Cerner environment, attending provider will change to myself and the medical service would change to hospital medicine. So let's go back into this patient here. So what we've done now is we've changed the MRP as well as the service. Now we can start reviewing the patient. This is where I want to get a feel for how sick the patient is. Hopefully the previous MRP has left me a hospital course. And again, if there's another video that I have 
discussed about how to use this hospital course between physicians to make it meaningful. Any nursing handovers would be in this area under situational awareness and planning. And generally, there's just use this area here for any things for you to do, or if there's family members to contact, those sorts of things would be in the actions area. The document section is where you would see the emergency notes, consultation notes, as well as daily progress notes. Of course, you want to see how stable the patient is, so you want to look at the vital signs for today. You want to review the labs, and scrolling down, you'll see microbiology and diagnostics. Current medications that will be done here. This would be the medication history is the BPMH. I see here that the admissions med rec has not been done, so if you're receiving a patient, that wouldn't be good form from the last physician. Hopefully that would be done when you're inheriting the patient. And this would be the list of current medications that the patient is on. So at this point, we've got a pretty good understanding of how sick this patient is. We would then want to triage your day going through every patient like this, knowing which ones to see first. So at this point, I would go into the patient list again, and I would do the same for my next patient. Again, to review, going to click orders, changing the MRP as well as the service to hospital medicine. We would sign off on this and we would pretend that this would be working. And then we go into a rounding section. We would review our hospital course, nurses notes, seeing if there's any actions that need to be performed, uh, review the documents if needed, review the vital signs, labs, x-rays, and microbiology. And at this point, I would start making notes for myself after each patient I review just to remind myself who they are. And at the end of doing this uh, list of four patients, I would have a pretty good understanding of who I need to see first. So the next step, of course, is actually to see the patients. And depending on who's sickest, I would probably see those the first. Let's say if my first patient on this list is the sickest patient that I have, I would go up, see the patient, and then I find the local computer, put in my orders that I would think that this patient needs after I've seen them and assessed them. And then the last thing I would do is chart my note. And charting my note, I would put in the assessment plan first of all. I see that here there are no uh, items to address. Let's make chest pain a current issue and her diabetes a current issue. And so here we are, we can see that these have now populated the chest pain and then we would document what we saw in the chest pain. I would be fairly brief here to discuss what the patient looks like, their improvement or worsening, and what am I going to do about that? Whether it's placing them on Lasix, whether it's adding a chest x-ray and following up later to tomorrow, doing labs for tomorrow, those sorts of things I would be adding into my assessment plan. I generally would add another category to this to allow the patient coordinators as well as other team members as well as your fellow physicians to know what the plan for this patient is. And it's basically the disposition so under active issues, the closest thing we have is discharge planning issues. So we can start typing the first couple letters from those and there will be a discharge planning issues here. And we'll make that our last item here. And here in the discharge planning issues, we would put in things that are barriers to discharge. They are still on oxygen. They cannot go home yet. They're still on IV antibiotics. They cannot go home yet. And I would also put in here estimate of how many more days they'll be staying in the hospital. That way the rest of the care team knows what you're thinking and how they can plan their day to make it more efficient because believe it or not, the healthcare providers do read our notes, particularly now that they can read our notes. So the question is now, what do we do with these other uh, areas in our SOAP note? Uh, this is the history of present illness or the S part of our SOAP note. The physical exam is the O of our SOAP note. If you're handing this patient off to yourself the next day, I wouldn't necessarily focus too much on the S and O part of it unless if you need to remind yourself. Certainly by the end of the week, you should have a very good understanding of what's happened to this patient. And at that point, you would update your hospital course. You may be adding other things into the HPI part of it that might supplement the hospital course. Some 
minor details that you don't necessarily want to populate in your uh, discharge summary, but is important uh, to remind yourself or others in the meantime that don't necessarily belong in any assessment plan. The physical exam section, again, you're going to be seeing this patient every day and it's just there to document. When you're done that section, we generate a note and over here we have the general medicine progress note or the SOAP note and we will pull that in. All that uh, information will be automatically pulled in into the subjective objective and your assessment plan. So whatever you typed in those sections will be pulled in to this area. Once you're done, sign off on your note and you can of course change the title to anything you'd like. Title this as brief note or whatever you like. It is a general medicine progress note and when you sign off on that that will now become a part of your documentation up here. So when we refresh this area here, you'll now see your brief note up here. So at the end of the day, we go through one by one, seeing all our patients and documenting as we go. Depending on the availability of computers on the wards, you may want to save all your documentation towards the end of the day. However, I find that in that case, I oftentimes may forget to order some things or the finer details. So I generally try to document and put my orders in just after I've seen the patient to avoid any errors. But if there are no computers, you may not have another choice but to chart on another ward. So there you go, that's how my day goes normally. And at the end of the day, of course, I want to print off a billing report. And to do that, we go into reports here and we will select my list. And these are the four patients that we saw today with their billing information, birth date, and the associated demographics to bill properly. You put your billing codes here and hand it off to your billings clerk and print it off like we see here. And that is the end of your day. So there you have it. That is how I round my day. Hopefully you found a few useful things to make your practice better too. Take it easy, guys.